Welcome to Aging Gayfully. We're about adventure, leisure, travel, being a citizen of the world, traveling to destinations, and being a part of the global community as we age and prosper in body, mind, and spirit. Welcome to Aging Gayfully. I'm Josh, and we're almost halfway through January, and I don't know where all my socks are. You don't know where your socks are? What's up I with that? I don't know where all my socks are. I got a bunch of socks for Christmas. Uh-huh. And I would have thought I, you've gotten bow ties for Christmas. No, I got one tie for Christmas. Yeah. And while I appreciate the bow tie look, and I have to wear ties for work, I mean, let's be 100% honest. If I didn't ever have to wear a tie again in my life, I would not be upset. Well, you know, in an earlier episode, I told I told you and our listeners about how I've given away 75 of my bow ties. And I'm, That's I'm eyeing those uh, 25, 30 that are left and saying they need, they need to be gone. I just might take them up to northern Florida. What do you think? Oh yeah, you. I'll take some of them. But what if we did some sort of giveaway or contest or something? I think send them to listeners. I like that a bow tie giveaway. What do you think? Let's do that. All right, folks. As if you didn't need more reasons to listen to us, now you can get bow ties in the mail. There from you us. go, and maybe a book. Back to um, talking about me. Yeah, <laughs> I got a bunch of socks for Christmas, and I can't find them. And I, I've been wanting to fold them into my my ensemble. So well, that's that's what's up with. I've me. I, I I I have uh, breaking news. I've had to put back on my um, compression set stockings over the last uh, couple of weeks. So uh, my AFib's been acting up because I've been working too hard, sitting at my desk, not exercising. What's up uh-huh. with that? That's not that's not a good way to age gayfully. Yeah, we are still in the window of time in the new year where your New Year's resolutions need to be in effect. And I joke because I think that we shouldn't have New Year's resolutions. We should have new habits. And one of them is to always prioritize self-care, friend. Self-care. And and I'll take that a step farther because I've been trying to do this in some other areas. Self-compassion. It's okay to say no to things that you really don't want to do. Has that come up recently? Uh, it's come up uh, a lot here recently, yes. Uh-huh. But uh, uh, I think, um, at least for me, as I've gotten older, I, you know, I, not to drop any hints, but I will be 67 in a month. No bow ties, please. Compression socks. Maybe that's the... That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's excellent. Uh, but no, I think as 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 you get older, at least for me, I you know, no is not a bad word. Like you know, I, no, I can't do it. I'm sorry. There's going to be a few no's tomorrow. I know that, but that's a but, but it's okay. It's okay to say no. That's very healthy, and I, I do want to talk about that. But before I forget it, when I'm shopping for your compression socks for your birthday. Do they make them in a fishnet pattern? Oh yes, they've got tons of patterns. Should see the you, uh, uh, you should. I had to dig them out of the back of the drawer because I haven't had to wear them in three or four years. But uh, I've got I've got uh, balloons and goodness, they're all they're all fancy. But they cover up my tattoos on my leg, so that's it's it's a dilemma. That's why I would look for fishnets, yeah. you know, fishnet patterns, yeah. so you can still see your tattoos through there. Yeah, what a dilemma! If that's my biggest challenge today. I'm in, well, as you know, this wasn't my biggest challenge today with the soup dropping all over the floor in the kitchen. But that's yeah, that's for another episode. <laughs> uh, so we're you know this idea of saying no. It's so I think it's so uh, relevant in so many people's lives because. As I get to know people better, as as we you know we start having conversations of hey you know how was your how was your upbringing and all this and that, I find a lot of folks are carrying childhood trauma around, <laughs> and one of the trauma responses that that folks often have is that they are 
people pleasers. You know, it's one of those those ways to try to ensure that you feel safe, you know, by making sure that everyone around you is happy with you. And that often leads to unhealthy boundaries or no boundaries, you know, people right. not setting healthy fences for themselves just for their own well-being and not being able to say no is one of those trauma responses. So it's a very healthy thing to understand that it's okay to say no. In fact, it's necessary to say no. It, it, yeah, it's setting... Setting boundaries is uh, very difficult uh, for some people, especially if you are in that people pleaser uh, mode. And I've been in that. I think we've all, I think we've all had eras in our life, times in our life where we kind of, you know, in and out of that, those modes. But the most important thing is to recognize them, and yeah. and then to be able to step into your comfort zone. I want to push back on this idea of stepping into your comfort zone because for so long I've been told you need to step out of your comfort zone in order to grow. What do you say when I say that? Because surely you've heard that as well. Right. I I, I, I just think it's the opposite and, and I, I can only apply it to me is that, and, and it relates perfectly to what we're talking about, the saying no, like saying no. Um what do you really, really want to do with your life? What What are the things that make you happy? And I, you know, I certainly understand that there's responsibilities, and you have to people have to earn a living, and all those things play into this. But are you really doing what you're, what you feel like you're called to do? Or are you doing something because you have to do it? I mean, I, 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 this is the, the fine line here from stepping out of your comfort zone to stepping into your comfort zone. So if you're, you're in your comfort zone, well, um, that, but are you happy? Are you, are you, you know, and here's in my example, I had a comfort zone of my first job at Catholic Charities. I stayed there for 10 years. I probably stayed nine years too long because it was comfortable. It was comfortable for me. I don't want to, uh, and, and, and the double entendre here is that I, there were so many things that I wanted to do that I was afraid to do. And, uh, and so much, so in projecting those things that you want to do, that's where the comfort zone is. That's where your comfort zone, that's where your, uh, at least how, how I see it. I want to step into my comfort zone and do the things that that relate to my talent, skills, and abilities. And if you can earn a living doing that, that's that's even that's that's uh, gravy. But yeah, it, it, it's this: we get stuck in staying in things because it is comfortable. It's what we know, but is it really what you want to do? And I think people, and I'm going to project here just a little bit with you, because you have a talent that I, you have a lot of talents, but one that I greatly admire is your art, your, your, your artistic skills, you know, your, your artwork, the drawings that you do. And I've nudged you a couple of times and I've said, you know, these beautiful bears that you grow, that you draw, that you grow. <laughs> <laughs> that you bears. that you do you grow bears oh you'd be really popular in the <laughs> but the, those beautiful bears that you draw with uh, the one with the um at the beach with the umbrella and I, I i'm telling you you capture the market with your with your talents and skills on that but i also understand you have a family you have family to you have a response you have to earn a living all those good things but they play into how are you stepping into how how do you step into your comfort zone I feel like for me i was zoned in when i was bowling it was i may not have been you know the the superstar that i wanted to be but i was doing something that i was good at tried to make a living at and uh, Talk about having boundaries. 
I had boundaries and I knew that I needed to practice three and four hours a day. And I knew that, uh, um, if there was a, a having to make a choice of practicing or going out and having fun, I wouldn't practice. It's that discipline because you're, you're in your comfort zone. You, you, the mind, the body, and the spirit are all connected. And I think there's a lot of disconnect in, in people's lives because those three th- components are not in line. And that's what I mean by stepping into your comfort zone. Middle of last year, and I've talked about this on a previous show, I was having a very difficult time. I wasn't comfortable doing anything. <laughs> and I folded in some, mostly could be categorized as emotional wellness practices, you know, practicing gratitude. Right. I love that. I love when you started that. Yeah. And what that did, because I, I think stepping into your comfort zone obviously means different people um, have different responses to that. Sure. You know, in different contexts. Mine was, sure, there could have been things better about my job. There could have been things better about everything that was external to me, but I needed to align myself internally so that no matter what was going on in the outside, that I was healthy enough to to take it and appropriately respond to it, which I don't think that I was. Mm -hmm. So for me, helping me step into that comfort zone was an internal practice. Right. Embracing gratitude, embracing the idea that I'm happy because this 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 and that happens in my life and that overshadows all of these other things um it's an ongoing journey Mm -hmm. i would love to sell paintings and drawings of bear for the rest of my life but if i wasn't aligned internally and if i wasn't doing that work and if i didn't continue to do that work because god knows i'm not done I would end up with the dream job and still not be content, <laughs> still not be happy. <laughs> you, you, you got it. Spot so, on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, just wondering, you know, because verbal language often is inadequate. Mm-hmm. So, you know, what means something to you could mean something totally different to me, which is why we spin these paragraphs of words on these podcasts to try to explain ourselves. Yeah, I, I've got a – Just this just came to me, and this is – 20 some odd years ago um, um, when I was doing some, uh, doing some church work and the church needed, a, they needed a business manager. As a lot of churches do, <laughs> they needed a business manager. And so this, um, this fellow who was a uh, member of the church, he, he, he quit his high paying, uh, job at a at a marketing firm and uh, no telling what the what the rate of cut in his pay was uh, but i remember him telling the story about how peaceful his day was because you know he he was in a position where he could make the change obviously but it, it wasn't to him it wasn't about the money it was about finding that peace and 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 an internal peace and solitude knowing that you're you're kind of following your dreams and you're able to do and you you know he was able to do that i was on i haven't probably talked to him in 20 some odd years but i remember that model because uh, as some of his former co-workers uh came to church and you know know, everybody always kind of communicates and talks and they how much they all admired him for, and I'm this is on my phrase here. How he stepped into his comfort zone, how he left that corporate world and and came in and did what I would say what he was called to do. And that's the you uh, know again, it's different for everybody, but it's finding that happy space and in, in what you're doing, and that's that's where I mean stepping into your comfort zone. We all want to be challenged. I mean, you you challenge me regularly to be better at this and um, and a few other areas too on technology, and I appreciate that because that 
allows me to step into my comfort zone, which is doing that. This is what I, I love to do this. Even if there's just one person listening, but I think there's two. I think there's, there's, quite, yeah, there's a quite a few actually, but no, this is, I think this is, you know, communicating is what life is supposed to be about. I've got this other podcast, short, uh, three times a week podcast called Hey, Try This. And I was doing some research for it the other day. And I came across this story of this gentleman in Tampa Bay who worked for a telecom company making quite a good living and had to lay off 50 people at one point and was miserable about it. Yeah. You know, it, it just it just wrecked him. But he did it. And then the next round of layoffs, which came quickly, had his name in them. And so he came off of this this career that he thought he'd have for the rest of his life until he retired. The end of it was awful for both of the reasons that I just said. So instead of going out and trying to find another job like that, he put his life savings towards opening a little old copy shop. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I heard this story, or I read this story, because it was in you know a Tampa Bay newspaper profiling how wonderful his copy shop was, how happy he was, and how content he was in doing it, even though, of course, you open a little old co coffee shop, you're going to struggle. I mean, you just are. Right, it's... And it, you know, he, he at, at the age of like, I think he was in his mid sixties, he started over and that <gasps> got me thinking about this whole idea of starting over and how you get the, the, the age of the demographic that this podcast is pointing towards. And people think I can't possibly start over now. It's way too late. I can't tell you how many times I've started over. I think we should go on look. I think we should road trip to Tampa and do a live show at this coffee shop. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll and, see if I can and have find it. out the name of it. Yep. But, you know, it's it's definitely not too late to start over because we've seen it happen so many times in different ways. Very intimidating to do it so. It is very intimidating. Uh, you know, you, you not only the 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 mental gymnastics that you go on that goes on in, internally with yourself, but, uh, you know, dealing with external comments as well. And it, you know, that comes full circle back to what, where we started this about setting boundaries and having that, uh, having that capability to, if you're going to be a people pleaser, please yourself. Hmm. Start with yourself. Because that'll manifest itself to others, and it's that 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 old adage. You know, and I I don't like to use the word self care anymore uh, because of my as a as a former caregiver. <laughs> uh, you know, self care is just it's just <laughs> it's kind of a buzzword, but everybody knows that they need better self care. It's finding that path to do it, and then when I I prefer to you know. Self, what about self compassion? Well, what do you mean by that? I said, well, you're so intense on taking care of somebody else, or, or your your foot. Your a lot of us, especially in the caregiving circles, are so focused on taking care of somebody else that they forget that you forget to take care of yourself. And I think that kind of can be a generalized statement that sometimes we forget to take care of ourselves. And that's where the self-compassion comes in. It's okay to say no. It's okay to set boundaries when it's appropriate. Getting to that point is easier said than done. Yeah, and, and it's funny because the type of self-compassion that you're talking about is the type that we have not talked a lot about historically. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk all about, okay, you need to exercise, you need to eat right, you need to do all those things to address your physicality. And so if you have someone who is uh, a senior adult, when they hear self-care, self-compassion, or just, dude, you got to take care of yourself, however it's expressed, that's where they go to. But the reality is, is that the tending that needs to happen is in the garden of their mind, right. you know, and the the verbiage for a lot of senior adults just isn't there. 
to even discuss that. Right. Because that was never discussed. It was never just, You know, stiff upper lip. You don't talk about how you feel. Right? Um, your feelings don't matter. Your feelings don't matter. Suck it up. So, you know? Oh, God. For, for, the, for those uh, who identify as men, you know, it's like, oh, be a man. You know, and all of the toxic masculinity that that carries, you know, with it. Yes, we can start over at whatever age. It starts with awareness on, you know, what it means to be healthy and to be well as a whole person. Mm -hmm. So not just your physicality, but your emotions. And I can see where that would be terrifying for one who historically has not even touched that topic. And that's why I think we have these these open and honest conversations so that people can feel like they're not alone. Because there's too many people in this world that feel like they're alone. And if there's one thing that we can accomplish as we continue to do these podcasts and and look at doing some uh, group tours later on in, in 2024 is to, is to connect to people who feel isolated, who feel alone, who have something to offer, because we all have something to offer. We all have a talent or skill that we can, um, uh, that we can share with somebody. It doesn't have to just be drawing wonderful bears on a, on a beach. There's p people have tons of skills that just need to be, they need to come up to the forefront. And that's a whole part of about aging gayfully is taking your, taking your, your skills, your abilities, your, your taking your fears, your, your accomplishments and, you know, putting them all in, uh, in a jar and just, you know, throwing them up in the air and just celebrating it. Some people would say that's fairy dust. Well, we're in the right place for that. Well, we are certainly in the right place for that, for sure. <laughs> so, so, and that's, you know, again, here's an, you know, an example with the aging gayfully. Well, you know, I've been talking about people who are close to me, though. I've been talking about doing this for a couple of years, and there's never really been the right fit but it's all, I've never, ever stopped talking about it. I've never, ever lost the dream. And then this, this bald-headed guy comes on, comes from, appears from Gainesville, and there's like a connection that we're doing this. And, the, you know, the amazing thing is we've never really met in person, but we've forged, you and you and, and, and Amanda and I, we've, we forged a really trusting friendship and, and it's all, and so far it's still, it's all virtual, <laughs> but it kind of proves the point to when you're reaching out to follow your dreams and to step into that comfort zone, you got to take a risk. And, and it's like when I called you that day, it's like, Hey, you know, I've been listening to you guys and, and look where this is, look where it's gone just by taking that risk. It's a bonus that you're a bear drawer. <laughs> Very nice. Well, you know what I really want to hear? I really want to hear some feedback from our listeners. Listen, if you are out there, if you're listening, and you don't know where to start, right? So you recognize that there is a need, and, and you recognize that inside, you know that you need to tend to your emotional garden, if you will, but you don't know where to start. You don't even know the words to use. I want you, even if it's one sentence that says, hey, um, Chris and Josh, I don't know where to start. I just need I just need to start. Just need to Please start. send that to us. Yeah. Please send it to us at yes, I am at aginggayfully.com. That's yes, I am at aginggayfully.com. And and as you write that out, if you would like us to share it on on, on the podcast, great. But just you know, kind of say, well, whether or not you want your name added, or if you do or don't, you just get that little disclaimer permission to <laughs> to share your to share your story.
Well, Chris, this was not at all what we were going to talk about today, but I'm glad that we did. The best conversations are spontaneous. The best conversations are spontaneous. And we're going to talk, I think, on our next episode about sustainable travel. And I think by, um, by our next episode or maybe the one after, I'll have some real exciting news about a, uh, a project that we're working with on the, with the University of Barcelona on mapping the travel experience for LGBT uh, seniors. So stay tuned. Excellent. All right, so I am Josh, and that is the Hall of Famer, Chris. That's right, that's me. But if I threw a bowling ball right now, my body would probably be like the Flintstones. My body would, my body would just be like an all over the, be all over the lane. It would be messy, just like the, just like the soup was all over the floor this morning, uh, in the kitchen. So, but uh, I so appreciate your talents and skills, Josh. Well, you are you are the guru that I am following, so <laughs> it works out. Until next week, we'll see you all soon. All right. Okay. All right. Bye, y'all. Bye.